Okay, welcome back to Mr. M Rocks. Today we're going to start our robot project, and the robot I'm going to make is going to have this uh, sort of tank tread with wheels. I'll show you a very simple way to make the wheels, and then we'll add the tank tread. In a later video, we'll rig them so they'll all move together, and then we'll attach these treads to our robot. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is make a single tank tread. To do that, I'm going to simply add a cube. Notice my cube didn't go to the middle, so if I hit uh, Shift S, Shift S, and say cursor to center, my cursor now is there. Shift S, selection to cursor, so now this guy is all centered, and if I scale this on the Z axis, and I scale this guy on the Y axis, I'll get the rough shape of the tank tread that I want to work with, and then I'll tap into edit mode. I'm going to add some loop cuts along these different sides, maybe four on this side. Uh, if I come over here, I can add some loop cuts over here. I'll add maybe just two there, but I'll scale these guys. I want the edges to be a little bit closer, so I scale that on the Z. And if I come over here, I'm going to add maybe six. Let's see, that's five, six, and you know what? I want one right in the middle, so I think I'll add one more. Okay, so at that point, uh, to save myself a little bit of time, I'm going to uh, turn on my transparency. I'm going to add a mirror modifier, and I'm going to cut this guy in half. So the first thing I'll do is uh, box select this whole guy, and I'm going to hit X, and I'll delete those vertices, and then add my mirror modifier. And I'll make sure that I add him over the x-axis. And so uh, add my mirror and uh, make sure that it's being mirrored along the x. If I had this switched, I wouldn't see it. Now this thing's being mirrored along the y, so all the vertices are getting mirrored onto themselves, which is not what I want. So in this case, uh, I'll turn clipping on, and I'm going to create a basic tank tread shape. And I'm just making this up, so I think uh, part of it's going to stick out here. And I'll simply uh, extrude that out on the Y uh, a bit. I'll extrude it out on the Y a bit more. And then I'll scale it down. Uh, so I've got that center part over here. I'm going to take these two guys. And then I'm going to extrude also on the Y, but in the opposite direction. So these guys are going to fit together like little puzzle pieces. I'll extrude on the Y again. And now I will scale this way down. Uh, at this time, I can take uh, these guys over here. And I can extrude these guys out. So let's go ahead and say extrude on the x-axis. And I'll bring that out just a bit and scale it down. I'll extrude it even more on the x-axis. And this time I'll extrude it, or I'll scale it way down. And uh, I think I'm going to bend those guys so they're kind of pointing down. Uh, and that's good. Now the track is going to need some teeth uh, to grab onto the terrain as tank tracks are apt to do. And so maybe I'll grab uh, just a few more here. And so I'm going to take um, these guys, and I will extrude those on the z-axis. And uh, then I will scale those guys way down, uh, maybe push them up. And uh, I could even rotate this guy a little bit on the x and uh, kind of create a sharp grabbing. Actually, maybe the other way, rotate on the x that way. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just making this up. So that's looking a little bit like a tank track to me. Uh, in the bottom down here, I'm going to take these faces and I'm going to create a little groove here. And so I'll take all of those. Actually, maybe I need one more loop cut in here first. Uh, take these guys. Um, again, I will take these faces. Maybe it'll be easier with a circle select. Take those, uh, take these two guys here, and now I will begin to move that up. So I've got a little, maybe I'll scale it a little bit on the X. And so now I've got a shape that I'm guessing looks something like a tank tray. Okay, well let's see what it looks like when we put these guys all together. You can still scale this individually, but at this point, uh, if I wanted to, um, I can take uh, this shape. I'm going to apply the mirror modifier. So now he is complete. He's symmetrical along the y-axis. And if I add uh, this time, I go back into my modifiers, and I'm going to choose an array modifier. And I can see that this guy is choosing uh, to go out along the x-axis. I have exactly two. I can add more if I want. But that's not the direction I want to go. So I'm going to take uh, on my x-axis, I'll change that to 0. And on my y-axis, I'll change that to 1. And then I can tweak this so that it is just the, the right distance apart. Maybe uh, 
0.75, and so now that's looking like a tank tread to me. Now you can see that as I uh, increase the count in my modifier, these guys are heading out uh, along a particular direction. And what I want to do is I want to uh, wrap them around a curve. And so to do this, uh, let's go ahead and give this guy a name. I'm going to go back into my end tab. I'm going to choose uh, item, and I'm going to give this guy tread. I'll give him the name tread. And then I'm going to add uh, to the cursor, I'll add my circle curve. Now up here you have mesh circle, but down here you have curved circle. And if I add a curved circle, that's going to do something a little different. You won't be able to see this in the model. But if I rotate him uh, 90 degrees on the y-axis, uh, he's looking pretty good. And I'm going to uh, take this guy and move him up a bit. And I'm going to simply grab this guy and going tabbing into edit mode, I can use these handles to change the shape. And so I'm going to pull this guy up. And uh, I'm going to grab this guy and pull him way out this way. And I'm going to take this guy and pull him way out this way. And then I can move these handles and I can change the shape of my um, tread. And so this is the shape that my uh, track is going to follow. So whatever tread shape I want for my robot, this is where I'm going to create that shape. And so uh, if I wanted to, I could even come in here and uh, kind of bring these guys in. But I'm going to leave it just like that. And so now I want to take my tr tank track uh, I'll bring it back down, so I will tab out of uh, edit mode, I will grab this guy on the uh, z-axis, bring him right down here, and now I want to wrap him around. It looks like he's too big relative to the size of my circle, so take my entire guy and shrink him down, and then all I have to do is uh, come back here, uh, I'm going to add another modifier, oh let's give this guy a name. Uh, so let's go back into um, item and call him uh, tread curve. And so now I'm going to uh, take this guy and to the tank track I'm going to add another modifier. I'm going to add a curve modifier and I'm going to add the object that I want it to curve around which is the tread curve. And you can see that's not heading in exactly the direction that I want. So I'm going to come over here to Y, and uh, I get this shape. So this is not great. Notice I have a lot of distortion here as this thing's bending around. It is taking the basic shape, but part of the reason for that, or perhaps the only reason for that, is here in the transforms, um, I'm actually getting a location of zero. So I'm going to take a location of 3.1. I'm going to change that to zero. And so now my tank track is going to follow exactly. So notice that all of these guys are zeroed, so the relationship between these two guys uh, is fine. I don't have that distortion. And now if I come back uh, in here to my array modifier, so let's go ahead and close that guy, I can bump up the number of tank treads so that they match and I get it right to where I want him to be. And he's a little bit too long, but that's okay, because now all I have to do is scale this guy. And as I scale him down, I can put that guy right so he fits perfectly. And there it is. Let's go ahead and see what this guy looks like. If I wanted to see what he looks like in render mode, I would come over here. Uh, not very interesting, and so I will add a uh, material to this. So I'm going to come over to uh, append. I'm going to append a material. Again, this is uh, Mattamessive materials from BlendSwap. Free download. These are wonderful materials, uh, and I really enjoy using them. So thanks to the author of that. Uh, let's go to Glossy Metal. And I'm going to choose this guy, come back over to my materials, and uh, let's see, this guy has no material. So I'm going to choose glossy metal, and he gets this glossy. Now, I don't really like the particular colors in this, the red and so forth, so I can just come down here and tweak that a bit. Uh, maybe I'm going to take that and make it more, uh, so make that darker, make it a little brown. Same thing down here, I can take this guy make it a lot darker. So anyway, I get a material that's interesting, and I can just change the tweaking on the color a little bit. Notice also I don't have a, a subsurf modifier on this guy, so I think I'll do that as well. I'll just come over here, and I'll add one more modifier to my tank tread, and the modifier I'll add now is a subdivision surface, and uh, if I bump that up a little bit, it's just going to get a little bit 
uh, sharper, a little bit smoother rather. Uh, I can come back over here and I can say smooth shading. And so this is now looking to me like a tank tread. And uh, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to make a wheel. And so let me go ahead and uh, come back out of rendered mode into solid. And I'm going to just, I think I'll move him to another layer for just right now. So I will take him and move him to this layer. Same thing with this guy, hit M, move him to this layer. And now I'm ready to start a wheel. Okay, so now we're going to make a simple wheel. And uh, I think the simplest way to make a wheel is simply to go to create and add a circle to the center. And pay attention to what I'm doing here. Let's say I want there to be on this guy, uh, let's say, 20 teeth. And so I want there to be, um, for each tooth, I want there to be four more, um, let's say, vertices in between them. And so I'm just going to say uh, 20 times 5 and say, okay, so this will be a 20 tooth wheel. Uh, 20 times 5 is obviously 100. But uh, now when I come down here, I will tab into edit mode and I'm going to select um, uh, edges. And uh, I'm going to use the select tool and come down to checker select, and I'm going to bump this up to uh, five. And the reason I'm doing that is it's going to select every fifth tool. Uh, make sure when I do this that I have this guy selected on, let's say, active element. And if I scale this guy out, I can see that he is just scaling that out. Now, the reason I chose five was because uh, in addition to this line, I'm going to have one, two, th one, two, three, four more. And I wanted this to be a little bit wider than this tooth. And so now this guy is ready to go. And if I look at him right down the side, he is um, going to be uh, the basic shape that I want. So I'm simply going to extrude him on the Z axis and move him up. I'll do another extrude on the Z, get a little edge there and kind of uh, scale that in. And now if I look at him from the top, uh, I'm going to extrude and scale and notice I'm not getting a perfect circle. That's okay because I can come back to select a second time and I can go back to checkered select. And now when I do this, uh, I think I'll change this guy to um, active element again. Let's see what happens there. If I scale this guy in, he's going to scale just those guys so I get my circle back. Now if I look in here, that's looking rather circular. And so I can alt select that line, get the entire line, edge select, and I'm going to come in, scale that in just a bit, and now I begin to shape this guy. So let's come back over here, and I'll drag this guy down and just kind of create that little bevel. Uh, extrude on the Z axis. Uh, extrude again uh, by scaling in now, and I'll bring that guy down a little bit so I'm getting kind of a curve shape. Extrude and then scale. I need a hub, so I'll say extrude and then scale in just a bit and I'll bring him back up, extrude and then uh, up on the Z axis, uh, extrude on the Z axis again and bring him in, extrude and scale and now I've got that guy and maybe I'll just extrude this one more time on the Z axis and bring that down. So there's a basic shape. Uh, if I wanted to deal with the other side I could do the same thing, extrude a little bit on the Z axis and scale that in and um, now I'm going to extrude and just scale that in. I'm not going to worry about that guy not being uh, round or finished or anything if I wanted to scale it in. Uh, just go ahead and leave it like that and so now I have a basic wheel. So I'm going to apply this to my uh, other tracks. So uh, what I'll do is I will uh, rotate him on the Y 90 degrees and now I'll bring my tank tread back. So coming back over to this uh, layer, uh, I will take this guy. Uh, again, I'll hit M and I will say, move him back to this layer. Take this guy, hit M, move him back to this layer. And then as I go back to my original layer, I can see these guys are together. And I'm gonna move this guy in and uh, I didn't wanna move him. I'm gonna take this guy and move him kind of into place, uh, scale him down. And uh, this is just tweaking. I don't really have any logical way of doing this, although I think I do want this guy to be quite a bit wider, and so I will take that whole guy and scale him on the x-axis and just bring him way out, uh, again scale on the x, scale
scale on the X and bring them out so he's roughly the same width and so that is uh, what I'm searching for so notice that I left a groove in here so maybe uh, what I could do on this guy if I come back in here I could add a couple of loop cuts in here and uh, if I would go back to faces and choose these guys uh, I could extend that out so it looks like it's fitting into that groove um, that might look like it needs to go scale out on the X a bit more so it kind of matches uh, maybe bringing it out this way and then I want to scale this make sure I have active element back on if I scale this out that's not where I want it to be um, so let's go ahead and do uh, medium point scale out yeah so that's going to kind of come in and look like it's fitting into um, that edge a little bit better in any case uh, that is the tank track uh, let's go ahead and give that guy a color do I have any colors over here let's go over to materials and see what I have uh, in here don't really have much so I'm going to go back to meta massive materials and let's choose something oh I don't know let's choose something more interesting how about um, green how about purple car paint purple that's a nice color so I'm going to go ahead in here and I'll choose uh, flakes purple and uh, let's see what that looks like together uh, go ahead and see him in render mode again and I have this uh, nice brown trink track with a beautiful purple wheel and uh, I think that looks quite nice okay come back into solid mode I will take this guy and I'll say shift D Y so I'm moving him over here I'll take shift D Y again uh, move him right into the middle and then drag him up and this guy I'm going to make a bit smaller uh, and have him right in here. So now I've got uh, the basic shape. Uh, I think the edge looks okay. Maybe, maybe I can tweak that a bit and uh, move this guy out this way. And uh, let's see what he looks like one last time and then that'll wrap up this video. So I've got these beautiful purple wheels and my metallic brown for my tank tread and uh, I'm pretty satisfied. I play around with different materials, I really enjoy doing that, but these, uh, these guys are looking good. So I'm going to have a robot with uh, this kind of tank tread wheels and uh, later I'll build, uh, in the next video we're going to rig these so that they all spin together.